the format with a vengeance. Good. Why do I feel like trash today? Governor is ready to smash today. Opponents are gonna get crashed today. True annoyance is all they got left. I don't know why stress you out first or how many items you drop. But I know just what it feels like to have a stage one that can be stopped. It's like a garden that used to fry. Guard the wakes every time you try. Guard the watches every time you die. Guard the laughs every time you fall. They watch us every so I know when it's time to trash a lunch But the items in the discard are hearing me just to get revenge It's like a paranoid looking in the discard It's like I count items just to hit real hard It's like I can't stop using trash a land. It's like a car that is too good You can't defend What's up YouTube, it's Zapdos TCG here and thanks again for watching our TCG video. In episode 119 we talk about this one, Garbodor from the Guardians Rising set. It's a Psychic type, 120 HP for a stage 1, is neat, it has a 3 retreat cost, weakness to Psychic and it's all about trash challenge if you haven't noticed already. For a single Psychic energy we deal 20 damage times the amount of uh, item cards your opponent has in the discard and that can deal up to a ton of damage in the late game. Just think about every item man, there's a lot, there's Trainer's Mail, there's Max Elector, there's Puzzles of Time, there is Special Charge, Field Blower, Max Potion, Ultra Ball, Level Ball, yeah, Mega Turbo, Float Stone, Enhanced Hammer, yeah, Rescue Stretcher, that's also a new one, Fiat Seeker, and uh, way more items like that, even Super Odd, there might be some of them that I haven't mentioned, but they deal a ton of damage. If your opponent has used them a lot during the game, and if they don't use items, you're good, then they are not able to set up as quickly as possible, so uh, with the items, we make sure that in the late game, Garbodor is a monster to face. You don't want to come across a scary Garbodor like that, because most decks even use a lot of items, uh, even the new ones, uh, the uh, water-based decks, Aqua Patches, also an item and expanded dark patch is also an item so yeah Garbodor is a monster it's a stage one and only gives up a single prize card so this is why we're making a deck with this particular card so I'm gonna give you my particular deck list so get ready we run three Garbodor with trash lands from the Guardians rising set this is uh, the number 51 from the Guardian side rising set it's a regular rare and can be, uh, also come as a reverse as any card so I'm running three of those because there's also another Garbodor from the Breakpoint set. This is the one with Garbo Toxin. This makes it so if it has a Float Stone or a, another tool card for that matter attached, then your opponent isn't an ability lock. Actually, all abilities in play don't, don't work anymore. Also, we're running three Trubbish from the Breakpoint set and then one from the newest set, Guardians Rising. So uh, that uh, from the Guardians Rising set can uh, discard a card from your opponent's deck. So that can be kind of fun. The other one discards an energy with a flip coin. Also, there's Wobbuffet in the deck. If we happen to start with it, your opponent is an ability lock straight from the bat. Only abilities from psychic types work. So uh, Hoopa EX can go through this, but other things like if we're facing a Sylveon deck, EV's uh, yeah, energy evolution will not work when Garb uh, when the Wobbuffet is active. So Wobbuffet, only one copy in the deck. Then, this is something strange here. We're running a 1-1 one -one line of Espeon. Why is Espeon so good, you might ask? Well, it's a psychic type, which means you can actually hit for weakness to things like Mewtwo and uh, opposing Garbodors. The good thing is, you also have that first attack to confuse Pokemon. Usually this would not be very good, but that confusion actually makes it so they have to use Float Stone or Switch or Escape Rope. So that way they use more items with that confusion. Now we run two Tauros. Tauros is a great stall Pokemon. It has a lot of HP, 180, so it's uh, yeah, a lot to deal with for the opponent. They will have to one-shot it. Otherwise, Mad Bull GX is in town to destroy everyone. Then we have two Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele is the best card from Guardians Rising set. Uh, yeah, there's no doubt about that. I'm running two copies in this deck. The energy drive attack is good. The ability, the wonder attack is good. Getting a supporter out of the deck just when you bench it. And also the Tapu Cure GX can come in handy. We run one Shaman EX because if we have a terrible start, usually, and uh, we want to use Ultra Ball, we can either get a Tapu Lele or a Shaman. And if we already have a supporter in the hand, Shaman can also make it so we can draw more cards and use the supporter later. Because we do run uh, yeah, some supporters, which I'm going to talk about later. We run four double Carlos energies, mainly for the Espeon, for the Tauros, for the Tapu Lele, and even for Sky Return Shaman. Also, the Garbodor from the Guardians Rising set has Acid Spray dealing 70 damage with a flip coin. We can even discard an energy if need be. So, double Carlos energy, we're running four of those in the deck. 
is just so good. Definitely for Tapu Lele, if we get two of them attached to a Tapu Lele, we are able to deal a lot of damage. I'm also gonna talk about some tech cards later in the video, so be sure you are still watching because you don't wanna miss this. Garbodor is one of the decks you should be afraid of at your next local tournament when Guardians Rising is legal. We run six Psychic Energies just because, uh, yeah, Garbodor needs that Psychic Energy attached to use the attack, trash a lanch, and uh, yeah, having six as uh, the ideal number. Maybe you can add it up to seven, adding something like an Aura Choreo to get the energy, a Professor's Letter, which I'm gonna talk about later. Those are the tech cards. And my version of the deck, I only run six Psychic Energies. Besides that, the energy count is uh, only 10, so uh, that's kind of decent. We have space for a lot of stuff. We run four Sycamore. Now you can also add in three Sycamore and a li uh, Professor Lily, or actually what is Professor Lily? Uh, just a Lily in general. This is also a card you can add. It's available in the Sun and Moon set and it lets you draw cards until you have eight in your first turn and six if it's not your first turn. Then we have two N, so I'm running the, as the draw supporters for Sycamore and two N. I think this is ideal in the deck since we do run two Tapu Lelis to get those out. We run two Lysander. Lysander is a great card to get something out of the bench position of your opponent to the active position just to knock out in one shot. Usually with Trash Alliance, but other situations are also possible. We can stall with it. There is also a Team Flare Grunt in the deck. Discarding that energy from the active Pokemon can be huge in certain situations. Then there's also a delinquent, so you can kind of see uh, Trash Challenge has been used in the late game and then there's a lot of disruption, so uh, like Team Flaregrant delinquent to make sure that your opponent has to use a lot of items because otherwise they will not progress or set up their own bench. We run one Parallel City, it's just so good, uh, limiting your opponent bench size to three. And then two, uh, Altar of the Moon, this is a new card, Guardians Rising is around, makes it so if we have a Psychic Energy attached, each of our Pokemon have two less retreat costs, which means uh, the Espeon has free retreat, the Wobbuffet has free retreat, Tapu Lele has free retreat, Shaman has free retreat, Tauros only has one retreat, and the Garbodors only have one retreat, so that is awesome. We run four Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball is the best search engine for Pokemon, and we're running a maximum copy of four. You can even add it up to something like a Nest Ball to get out your Trubbish as early as possible, but Nest Ball won't activate the ability of Tapu Lele and Shaman, so that's uh, kind of unfortunate. So I'm running four Ultra Ball. I think it's perfect in the deck to get everything out. Uh, you can even, uh, yeah, just use Ultra Ball and, uh, in a combination with a Sycamore on the first turn because we do have, uh, yeah, some recovery later on. I'm gonna talk about that. So, for VS Seeker, VS Seeker is a really great card in the late game. Getting your needed Delinquent, your needed Team Flare Grunt, Lysander, Sycamore, and you name it. We can reuse every supporter and the discard. So, that's why it's in there, four copies. And then there's two Trainers Mail, just for the consistency boost. I know we have Shaman, Tapu Lele, and a lot of supporters in there but the, the trainer's mail makes it so we can draw into that necessary piece that we need for that particular turn. Just think about it, we don't have a supporter. Oh wow, we draw into Ultra Ball, we can get a supporter with Tapu Lele. So there's that. There are also three choice bands in the deck, making it sure that Trav... Uh, that what am I saying? Carbador can get those the numbers to one hit KO because that extra 30 damage can actually be crucial in certain situations. Two Floatstone, I think it's definitely needed in this deck. Maybe you can add it up to three or uh, that's a personal choice, but uh, the Floatstone also makes it so uh, we can use Garbage Toxin at time to time and also getting that free retreat. If you happen to start with a Tauros or something that you don't want and you want to switch it to the active position. We do have Ultra of the Moon so there's two copies of that so only two float stone. Then three Crushing Hammer. Crushing Hammer is a great card, a disruption card. Flip a coin if has discarded energy anywhere on the field so that is awesome. Then there's also Enhanced Hammer doing the same thing but uh, making sure without the coin flip that we can discard special energies. Then of course Field Blower and Super Rod. So this is the deck list. Uh, uh, that I, I feel comfortable with. You can even drop the Aspion line and do some shenanigans here and there, but this is my personal list for now. This can actually change in the future, but this is the episode 119 giving you the Carbador deck list. So these are some tech cards I'm gonna talk about. Drampa GX is also something you might include in the deck. For a single energy, you can uh, deal 20 damage and discard an energy, actually a special energy to attach to the opponent's active Pokemon, so that is good. Uh, definitely good in the uh, matchup against the Sidewai and other decks that are heavily relied on special energy. So next uh, yeah, card I'm gonna talk about is Rockruff, in combination of course with Lycanroc GX, the Midnight form. So why would you run a, why would you want to run a fighting uh, Pokemon and a Psychic deck? Well, you can add up things like a Rainbow Energy, 
with rainbow energy we only need uh, one extra energy to use that second uh, actually that gx attack to deal 50 damage times the amount of banished pokemon your opponent has so lycanroc the midnight form can actually deal a lot of damage also in the mirror match you can one shot those tauros as anyhow so one one line and uh yeah maybe two rainbow energies if you want to include that i've seen a couple of uh, matches online where the lycanroc midnight form is actually the great counter in the mirror so if you're afraid of garbler with a lot of tauros maybe lycanroc midnight form can be the choice for you but be sure to include rainbow energies otherwise this card will not work at all also his uh, attack with 4 110 damage is not bad as well you can definitely attach a rainbow and then a dce to get that attack going it's a fighting type pokemon it also has a built-in lysander if you evolve it so why not run it in your deck if you have the room for it just drop the espion line put in that and maybe some two uh, rainbow energies uh, besides that there's also raichu Raichu is a great uh, option here because with your first attack circle uh, circuit you can deal actually uh, a lot of damage depending on your bench size so if you have a full bench out of five you can deal 100 damage for a DCE it's a lot electric type one shotting Eveltal Mega Rayquaza if you have a choice band so it's a good color card all around Lugia is also a nice option for two DCEs that deep hurricane the first attack is similar to the uh, actually it's the exact same thing like that Lele. then we have Mimikyu copycatting an attack that has been used against you but it needs two energies though so uh, an expanded maybe you can run Dimension Valley to help uh, cover for that attack cost then the evolution line Jolteon Vaporeon Flareon with some uh, EVs in there thrown in there we already run Espeon so maybe finding the room to put this in makes it so we can hit, hit super effective damage with our Garbodor think about it if your opponent has three items in the discard together with something uh, yeah if we have a choice band and have the type advantage we do super effective damage 490 damage and that is enough to the one shot EXs and GXs that are basic most of them we can also run in uh, more uh, Garbotoxin uh, Garbodors, but I prefer maybe adding a fourth Garbodor, but then we have to discard that uh, yeah, Garbotoxin Garbodor, maybe running the aggressive line of four uh, of those Trash Lange Garbodors is nice. Also, if we do that, we are not ability locked and we can use Mew also to use Trash Lange. Oracorio is also a nice card to splash around damage counters, so think about that. If you're building your deck, maybe putting one damage counter on, uh, yeah, for each of your Pokemon in the discard of your opponent can be crucial. And then, of course, there's an Oracorio, the other one, that can search your deck for two basic energies. If you're uh, yeah, not uh, uh, satisfied with the list and finding uh, problems here and there with consistency, that Oracorio might find you, uh, yeah, get that energy for you. There's Professor Kukui dealing that 20 extra damage, might be crucial in certain matchups. There's the Team Flare, actually Team Skullgrunt, makes it so you can discard two energies you see in your opponent's hand. Also, you get the knowledge of what your opponent has. Really great. Ninja Boy is also great. If you have something benched, Ninja Boy into something uh, like a Tauros to have that uh, Mad Bull Jax or ba Ninja Boy into something to be able to evolve to Trash Alliance also a great option Pokemon Fan Club we have not talked about it a lot in this on this channel but it makes you search your deck for two basic uh, Pokemon put them into your hand why is this good? you can get your Tapu Lele and a Garbo actually and a Trubbish then there's uh, Lily of course talked about that one as well Okay, so uh, the last two cards I'm going to talk about are Silent Lab, also at Stadium to consider if you want to slow your opponent down even more. And then of course the Professor Ladder getting your energies if you don't want to rely on Oracorio because the bench space is limited. Anyways, that was it for the tech cards on this deck list, so now let's go on to Poke News. Alright guys, welcome to Poke News. In this segment we talk about new releases and new card scans and what better way to start things off with the first thing on my list. The new Battle Origin tins are now available at Walmart. You might have seen a couple of these pop up on Facebook or Twitter. Actually we have Darkrai EX featured in a tin now with Dark Pulse which is really great because there is a Darkrai GX coming in Burning Shadows released on August 5th which is awesome. So this Darkrai EX is definitely one to get from these tins. You also get a Rayquaza tin that is available and Mewtwo uh, uh, EX10 but Mewtwo has been dropped down in price because Tapu Lele actually is around uh, uh, besides that there's also Garbler in the set that actually makes it so Mewtwo EX drops down the radar uh, as a deck but then again it's available as a 10 maybe we can test things out so uh, we have Darkrai EX featured Rayquaza EX from the Roaring Skies Reprint and then Mewtwo EX with Shadow Shot so that's good you also get two Sun and Moon packs one Evolution pack and one Fates Collide in these boxes or actually these EX tins for that matter so definitely pick them up if you have the money for it because yeah these EXs are really great legendaries like that next up is this, uh, some card scans we have Magikarp 
Gyarados and Darkrai from the Sun and Moon, the third set, Burning Shadows probably. So we have a Magikarp, 30 HP and actually deals 10 damage, flip a coin. If heads prevent all effects of attacks including damage done to it, which is actually helpful. If you play something like a Victini, you can actually make it so a Magikarp can stay alive turn after turn, but still again, 30 HP is really low and uh, that will be one shot almost by anything in the format. But it evolves to a Gyarados with 150 HP and for a DCE, Blast Apart deals 50 damage times the amount of Magikarp you have in the discard, similar of the one uh, all the way back uh, yeah, in the Diamond and Pearl era, so this Gyarados is good. You can just use Battle Compressor and expand it or just make it use Ultra Ball and just discard, try to discard as many Magikarps or maybe Sycamore is even better. Uh, just to s discard as many Magikarps as possible and then be able to deal 150 damage. With a choice band, it's 180 for a DCE. That is not bad to G-axis and E-axis, so a great card to have uh, in the upcoming set. And also it has the attack uh, for 160 damage, deals 30 damage to each of your bench books for two water and a, uh, the DCE so with that you can j even knock out your own magic cards but that would be barbaric yeah know that reference <laughs> yeah that would be ridiculous anyway uh, next up is Darkrai with 120 HP has the attack Hypno Wave for a Darkness and a Carless Energy, dealing 30 damage and uh, your opponent's active Pokemon is asleep, could be useful. And then Dark Raid, if the opponent's uh, active Pokemon has, actually, if your opponent has used the GX move in general, you deal 160 damage instead of the 80, so you get an extra 80 damage if your opponent already used their GX move. So that Dark Ride can knock out GXs or EXs in its path with that uh, second attack, only for a Darkness and a DCE, so it can be splashed into Evaltal decks, Dark Ride decks, or any Darkness deck that may appear in the future so a dark cry uh, that is not a gx or ex and that is really great 120 hp also uh, resistant to psychic is nice to have because garbodor is all around and the last thing on my list this time around is charizard ex or actually it's charizard gx the premium collection box gets released in september yeah that's right we get a charizard gx also with a jumbo card and uh, some booster packs in there so charizard gx has officially been revealed. We don't have the card scan yet, but it, it, its existence is there and will be part of the sets. Uh, actually, in the, the Burning Shadow set, I actually predicted Charizard GX as well. So, yeah, anyway, that will be released in September. One of those premium collection boxes. So definitely look for it if you love Charizard. And that was it for another exciting episode. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Definitely uh, show your support by destroying the like button and leaving something in the comment section what you think about the, the, the deck list I gave, what you think about the Poké news I gave, and stuff like that. Anyway, I hope you have. You're an awesome day guys and I will be seeing you guys soon with more TCG videos like this. I'm out. Peace out.